So Lucas, you work on uh, Tensor to Tensor, which is like a it's a, set, it's a library of data sets that's really designed to make machine learning more accessible, right? Could you could you tell me all about it? Yes, it is. Um, to me, it's it's a follow up on the work on TensorFlow. Mm -hmm. um, where TensorFlow is now used by many people, it's a great system. It lays the foundations for machine learning. We found that it's quite it's still quite hard for people to get into machine learning, to start, get their first model, get some system working, and then you can start going from there, tweaking, right. tuning. Right. Um, there are a few tutorials, but then you get stuck on them. There, there is a limit to what you can do. Right. So in Tensor to Tensor, it's a library that, where you can get the data, get the models, train them, um, Get a working system, but then we know you can also go further, get more complicated systems. We do research on it, so you can really try to do difficult things with it. So when you mention get the data, so there's known data sets out there that you've packaged as part of this. Yes, we've uh, we've packaged a lot of the data sets that are used in academia, image classification data sets. There is a data set of digits that's like a hello world of, of machine learning. Uh, it's called MNIST. Yeah. And, uh, and there are many more. There is CIFAR, the larger data sets like ImageNet, text data sets, uh, captioning. There are a lot of them. So we package them so you don't need to know where to download them from. <laughs> it's right. there. But you also don't need to know how to pre-process them because there are a lot of tricks that people use for pre-processing, for adjusting. It's sometimes hard to find them okay. if you don't know them. In tensor to tensor they're all in the code. We explicitly point out, here is the pre-processing, so you can read it, know how it's done, or you can just run it. Then you get the data, you have it, you can run your own models, or you can run the models that are there in Tensor to Tensor. Got it. And that's really useful to have because sometimes you just want to get straight to training and executing on models, right? Rather than needing to figure out all the things that I need to do for a specific data set. So if that's already done for us. It... Yes. On the other hand, sometimes you have your own data set which you, and you just want to run existing models on it, it, mm -hmm. it can be harder than people think. Yeah. In Tensor Tensor, you have the API. You just make your data set adhere to this very simple API. And all the same pre-processing, all the same models will be applied. So you should get reasonably good results yeah. just running the existing models. Common concept in programmer is right, don't repeat yourself. So if you've already done yes. the work for pre-processing something, <laughs> If I put my data in that format, then I'm not repeating. Yes, it, it's an effort to put the machine learning components and best practices on, on a single platform mm. so that not everyone has to redo it every time. When I first started looking into Tensor to Tensor, one of the things I noticed is that a lot of the things in Tensor to Tensor are described as problems. And can you describe what you mean actually by a problem? Yes, in the simplest case, we say MNIST is a problem. Okay. It's a, uh, you want to put in an image of a digit and get out which digit that is. And MNIST is a data set that has supervised examples for, for of this kind. But some problems are unsupervised. You just get the image, and the neural network should figure out the digits. Right. Some problems are kind of reinforcement learning problems. You, are, you just get some signal, this was good, this was bad, but it's coming from an external environment. Okay. So we are trying to make a single interface so you can package these different things. If you put it as a problem in Tensor to Tensor, you're guaranteed that the models we have will run on it. So Got if it. you're coming with your data or your reinforcement learning problem, put it there. And the existing models, the baselines that we have, can be run on it. Cool. Yeah, because for me, like as I've been doing, one of the things I've been doing is I've been just trying to find raw data and then I'm pre-processing that data, and then I'm training a model, but I don't have any context like what are the best like best ways to pre-process and best ways to format the data. Do I normalize it? Do I not? You know, all those kind of things. So if I'm instead of thinking in those terms, what I'm able to do is just shape my data according to uh, tensor to tensor, and then you'll have yes. pre-written code that will work <laughs> for me. <laughs> yes, it, it's certainly a great thing to do once or twice to learn. Mm -hmm. Do everything end to end on your own take a course, do a tutorial. But what we found out in Brain, we've been doing research on these topics for years now, after your 10th model, you don't want to redo everything from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you want to compare with your model from a year ago. Mm. It's really great to have these things organized, tested, right. maintained, working. Yeah, yeah. And I think this really makes machine learning more accessible to a wider group of people, which is one of the goals in Google Brain. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, it's like, because it's open source, right? So some of the things that you do for pre-processing, I can go and take a look. 
Yes. Right? And I can learn from that. So if I want to write my own preprocessor, I can learn from what you've done. And we, we strive for a little bit more than just open sourcing. We, we really try to keep the code readable because mm. <laughs> you can open source code that's very hard to read. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> uh, we're trying to keep it organized so you'd know where to look. Right. You, there is a preprocess function in every problem class, and you know, okay, I need to know the preprocessing for this kind of data. I look there. Some of the coolest things that I've seen Tensor to Tensor do is actually generation of content, right? You've done some like Wikipedia generation? Yes. So we. we or should have, I say wiki generation rather than, right? We have classification models, but we, we work on generating text mm. a lot. And one example of generating text is translation. You mm. take a sentence in one language and then generate, say, a sentence in English that's a translation. You generate it usually word by word. But it's a lot of fun to just let it generate without conditioning on anything. Just say, generate some sentences. And for a single sentence, it might not be that fun to read. But we trained this on whole Wikipedia articles. Mm. Wikipedia is a great data set. It's large. It has a lot of articles with nice structure. Mm. And we, we see that it can generate wonderfully coherent things that are really hard to tell from real yeah. articles, but totally made up. <laughs> so what, what do you write articles about? What we kind of had, things you make uh, up? Every time you generate, because you sample, okay. something different can come out. Okay. So we sampled, and once came out an article about a Japanese music team it has right. a composer. It has, uh, has a name, I think Motohiro Oda, totally made up. We okay. Googled. There sounds... doesn't seem to be anyone like yeah. this, but it... <laughs> If you're watching Motohiro, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, sounds reasonable. And the, it has sections when the band formed, who joined. It has ah. a section on when they performed. They performed with Led Zeppelin. So it clearly learned some knowledge about the world, like what are band names, what right. do they, who do they can perform with. It has it has a period in which it exists, and the dates are like make sense. Oh, so cool. uh, and and then the band is to break apart with Motohiro in tears. <laughs> <laughs> so it generates a long longish story. I'm in tears too. I never got to see them. <laughs> yes, but then you you run this again, and you get like some fake book or some fake TV series. Uh, I like the fake TV series. It had like seasons and. And names of episodes. And oh wow! It was yeah. like about a boy in the suburbs. <laughs> as a summary. <laughs> oh, this is great. So I mean, if, if I'm a writer, I can get ideas by having this thing throw, you know, articles at me. So and another thing that I saw that you've been working on, and there was a blog post recently about generation of poetry. That was uh, done together with Lack from Google Cloud, and he's a technical writer, and he said, "Well, you're saying machine learning is accessible with this library." Let me be the guinea pig. Okay. Let me try to do something I make up and see whether it's really easy enough to do. And he said, okay, why not generate poetry? You're generating text. I would like to generate some poems. He says, there is the Project Gutenberg, which is a large database of open literature. He wrote a script that selected some poetry and said, let's train on it. Let me try, can I hook up this data into the system? train one of the models on it, will it work? And he did it, and it didn't work. <laughs> well, he trained, but the model was not good. It was not tuned to, to this kind of data. Mm. And he says, well, but we have automatic tuning for the models. Let me see how I can do that. Okay. And he tried and tried, and then it worked. And he wrote a whole blog post how to, I, I, I love this because it shows you, if you come with your own data and mm. want to get something, how do I actually do this? Mm. And it goes through the whole experience. And at the end, there is actually a service <laughs> which you yeah. type a line and it continues I, your poem. And I, I think I, it's I've a tried lot it out, it was fun. And I've put a link in the description below. And I, it, I wrote better poetry than I can. <laughs> <laughs> so if I wanted to get started um, to do this kind of thing, um, maybe it's poetry, maybe it's song lyrics or whatever, and I bring my own data, what advice would you give? How should I get started with it? Well, go to Tensor to Tensor on GitHub, okay. or check out the poetry blog post. <laughs> you, you, you can pip install it and, and try to run from the command line. We also have Jupyter Notebooks, Python Notebooks, yeah. where you can see step by step what's happening. Also inspect the data, especially if you do images, actually seeing what's coming on input, what, what's mm. supposed to come on output, what's actually coming on output is, is a very useful thing. So there is a notebook where like, we step by step show you what to do. Go to the website, try it out, 
And also it's a thanks to a lot of my colleagues. It, it's, an, it's a very active project. We, we work on it every day. We work with it, <laughs> we work on it. So you can start with the small things like poetry. It's a very small data set. Mm. You can train in a few hours. MNIST, you can train in two minutes, <laughs> but you can move on. Like the Wikipedia, we also, we did just Wikipedia generation, but we also did Wikipedia conditioned on like web searches. So it doesn't make things up. It's actually factual. Right. It generates things that the internet says about people. I see. And this data set is eight terabytes. It takes a bit longer to train, but we, we still open source it thanks to the common crawl, which, which has a large part of, of websites uh, online. It's possible to actually do this well at home. I don't know, but at a university, you can get this really large data set. You can run state of the art models. Mm. So it's a platform where you can start small, but really go and <laughs> go big with cool. time. Cool. So Tensor to Tensor, and it's on GitHub as part of the TensorFlow yes. project. So cool. Well, thank you so much, Lucas. This has been so much fun, and I've learned so much. And thank you, everybody, for watching this episode of Coffee with the Googler. If you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Lucas, please leave them in the comments below. And to also, don't forget to take a look at the description. We've put links to everything that we spoke about. And also, we have a brand new TensorFlow channel on YouTube, so be sure to check it out. Thank you. <laughs>